Hello everybody, welcome. I'm Noo2. Thank you for watching this video. I've been going over four different deck archetypes, four different videos for a No Hope mode in particular. These decks are not, are built around No Hope in particular, especially, you know, in particular, in particular. Right, so the ordering of the cards will not apply to Nightmare mode. This is for No Hope mode. These decks are also built around uh, playing with human teammates, not with bots. So these decks will fit into that scenario of uh, what do you want to play or what 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 can you play and things like that. And you can go, I can be a DPS or I can be melee. I got a deck ready to go. These decks will also, for the most part, all fit into all four of the acts quite comfortably. This video, we're talking about DPS here. Power swap DPS. I was not a big fan of admin reload way, way in the past. A big believer now there's nothing else in the game that's quite as good as far as admin reload goes allowing you to sustain your damage over time and if you get any extra damage to support admin reload you can just pop off just be insane as far as damage right but we have other tools that we also want to develop and have at our disposal though for the most part we are sort of the, the dps character that's our primary thing here but of course let's not forget about our economy so we have share the wealth the extra copper everyone on your team should have share the wealth if not you're making a mistake next events of scavenger again extra resources and economy here having extra grenades to throw throughout the missions can be critical to your success and allowing you to deal with mutations very comfortably and hordes very comfortably uh, basically anytime you throw an accessory it's like you're getting a jail free card and if we have more of those well, we never stay very long in jail then, right? And then Pinata. I think Pinata is one of the best cards in the game right now. And uh, we're going to be throwing big old grenades or maybe pipe bombs, whatever it is. We're going to be throwing something destructive. And every time we do, during a horde event, Pinata has a pretty good chance of uh, generating something for you. Remember, it's per ridden that's been taken out by your accessory. So if you a uh, well-placed... Uh, Molotov, a well-timed grenade at a, at a tall boy in the middle of a horde event and things like that. I, I tend to find that Pinata will generate at least one thing for you per horde event for the most part. And I think if that's not the case, it was unlucky. It was probably a little unlucky. So now we have double grenade pouch. Grenade pouch to synergize with our Pinata. Bomb squad improvised explosives. These two cards will give us the foundation of extra grenade damage. So that if we do end up getting like blue or purple grenades... We will have the option of our grenades going nuclear, right? A nuclear on our bosses, allowing us to intentionally grenade dump a boss that's become a problem. I would recommend not opening up with a grenade dump into a breaker. You should fight the breaker for a little bit. And when it starts to fall apart, then you can grenade dump the breaker. And having bomb squad and improvised explosives will give you that ability to do so if you get the correct team upgrades or find, or find more damage cards uh, throughout your no hope run now it's animate reload as i was saying before this card's the foundation i think of any solid dps deck now i think it's a must have uh because you can cut out so much reload speed if you're not planning on using a sniper rifle but we do have reload speed here because this deck is a uh, very generalized run whatever weapons you want with this deck but keep in mind we have shredder so if you're gonna run a sniper rifle with this deck you're going to want like a Glock Auto or your Tech 9 as your secondary so that you can apply Shredder, power swap to your sniper rifle, and then shoot your sniper rifle. But I just find it's really fun to sort of mix and match here. As far as what weapons we choose, so long as we can apply Shredder, Admin Reload is going to allow us to do lots of sustained damage over time. And then Shredder, Silver Bullets, Combat Training, and Power Swap will give us that ability just take our, our damage to the next level now combat training i need to talk about just a little bit here with the bullet stumble damage okay so uh i like using this illustration i did the math on this very particularly if we were running a green ak and we have just combat training combat training will give us an extra 12 percent stumble damage per bullet now, if we take that same green AK and we just and we just had silver bullets, silver bullets would give us about 11% stumble damage per bullet. Funny enough, you might think silver bullets versus combat training, you might think the extra, the extra bullet stumble damage on combat training, is that more stumble potential than silver bullets? 
Well, the extra 5% damage that Silver Bullets has over combat training depends on the the the, the damage per bullet that your that your weapon has in general, right? So when it comes to smaller caliber weapons, right? Your SMGs, your Glock autos, things like that. Those lower damage per bullet weapons will benefit from combat training more when it comes to stumbling potential. Which is why I have this card in particular here, because with this deck having admin reload and no, no two is one here, right? No extra primary. Chances are we'll be using some sort of low damage weapon bullet per, you know, our secondary weapons doesn't do a lot of damage. But we still want to be stacking up that stumble potential here. So between combat training, silver bullets, shredder, and then into power swap, you'll have a lot of potential to stumble things with these with this wombo combo of cards here and do lots of damage. So it'll either be dead or be a stumbling. But feel free to mix and match. I love like Tech 9 into AA12, Black Auto in the AA. I, I'm a big fan of the AA12 right now. I think it's one of the, probably the best gun of the game. Next is Cold Brew Coffee. Between Cold Brew Coffee and Grenade Pouch, we have an extra 50% swap speed for our Admin Reload. And then Wide Mouth Magwell. Just, just if you do want to run a sniper rifle, extra reload speed is just straight up D DPS for your sniper rifle. Because your sniper rifle shoots faster with more reload speed. So I just wanted to pick up this extra bit of reload speed here to synergize with Cold Brew Coffee. If you do want to have a sniper rifle, you have an extra 45% reload speed, which is essentially... I, I guess about not quite but almost like 45 percent firing speed it doesn't quite turn out that way as far as the math goes but we'll be shooting uh significantly faster the sniper rifle feels quite good and then run like hell just the foundation of movement speed here or sprint speed in particular so many extra stamina cards here even if we don't get the extra stamina cards we can still for the most part reposition though you'll end up having some trouble on some maps like uh like Road to Hell will be an issue for you unless you get some extra stamina because that's a really long stretch of running. We need to do uh, Abandoned, uh, the Crossing. We have just enough to sort of do those things comfortably, but if we do end up getting extra stamina, we benefit tremendously from it because we have Run Like Hell in the deck. Very, very cool. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this deck or how you feel about it and etc. But I think this is a solid DPS deck with, extra, with, uh, with a nice foundation of economy, extra grenade slots, and then some other tools like reload speed and, and sprinting speed to allow us to do other things, especially if we find extra cards in No Hope mode, which there is a nice abundance of them. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the future.